In the COVID era, we have been <clears throat> looking to define the difference between what's considered essential and what's considered non-essential. As people uh, want to minimize their uh, excursions outside, they want to go ahead and minimize their exposure to uh, the people. Uh, people have been thinking about what's considered essential, what's considered non-essential. Not only have uh, people been thinking for themselves what's considered essential and what's considered non-essential, the government, various states across the country have been <coughs> defining different industries and different <coughs> forms of business as either essential or non-essential. Earlier on in the COVID season, back going back to the end of March, which seems like about 25 years ago, uh, the governor of California declared that all non-essential businesses were closed and people should stay at home except for performing essential activities, like in many states. However, when it came time to uh, make up the list of what's considered essential, <clears throat> the governor said that producing, selling, and buying marijuana all qualify as essential. This was after there was a great uh, <clears throat> a movement of advocacy on behalf of many of the players in the industry. They went ahead and uh, uh, convinced the governor to consider that essential. Essential. If you wanted to get your teeth cleaned, you wanted to get your eyes checked in the eye exam, you wanted to uh, get a haircut, those all had to wait till the coronavirus threat passed. Um, some have commented that if your hair gets shaggy, try trimming it yourself. Though perhaps not while you're high. Um, <clears throat> But this brought to uh, a larger question, what is considered essential in life and what is considered non-essential? Many times we confuse our priorities and uh, we mix up uh, for ourselves and for others the difference between the highly essential and not so essential. There's a very powerful lesson in this week's Parsha about this exact point. There's this um, <clears throat> very, very telling narrative of the uh, Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruben, the tribes of Gad and Ruben, they approach Moshe just as they're at the cusp of entering the land of Israel. And they say, you know what? I know we've been waiting 40 years to get to the promised land, but you know what? There's this uh, great uh, economic opportunity for us. We have plenty of uh, livestock. We have plenty of cattle. This seems to be a fertile area for livestock and cattle. So we would like to stay here. So Moshe's like, one second, let me, he did a double take. You guys want to stay here in the desert, the other side of the Jordan and not come into Israel? And they said, you got that exactly right. And Moshe was aghast. How would they, besides anything else, uh, let their, their, their brothers and sisters go into the land of Israel and fight the war while they're just sitting back and having a nice economy uh, functioning for them? So they said, no, 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 Moshe, don't question our patriotism. We are going to go ahead and we'll fight alongside our brothers on the other side of the Jordan. And after that period uh, it concludes, we'll come back and then we'll, we'll set up shop here. And that is um, the, the deal they made with Moshe. Moshe said he conditioned the territory allowed to them upon their fighting alongside their brothers. And, that, and, that's, and that's really what occurred. I just want to focus on a couple of points um, in this story. Number one is what about all the, the family members of the tribes of, uh, of Gad and Ruben? Yeah, the men fought in the war. What about their wives, their kids? So they said they, 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 had, they, had a plan, they had a plan for that as well. They went to Moshe and they said to Moshe, they said, uh, we're going to go ahead and build we're going to go ahead and build uh, pens for our livestock, and we're going to go ahead and ho build homes for our families, for our children. And um, Moshe, when he heard this, he said, uh-uh, that's not the way it works. You don't go ahead and first prioritize that we're going to build pens for our livestock. You don't focus on your economy first. You don't focus on creating your business first. But rather, he said to them, first you go ahead and build homes for your families, for your children, and then you worry about your business. I'll read the words of Rashi. Rashi says, Chasim hayu al 
Yosir Mibneim Ubnosehim. They had more concern for their livelihoods, for their money, more for their children and you know, for their sons and daughters. Shekdimu Mikneim Utapam, because they went ahead and prioritized their businesses prior to their children. Amr Laham Moshe, Moshe said, Lokein, this is not so. Asu Ha'ikar, Ikar, Bahatafel Tafel. Moshe <coughs> reframed it for them. Moshe went ahead and said, your priority should be, this is what's most important, and this is what's secondary. What's most important is, go ahead and build cities for your children. And then, then build uh, areas for, for your livestock. So we see from over here is that, is that uh, it's always important to have our priorities straight, and sometimes even the best of uh, folks get their priorities mixed up. I just want to focus on one other element in this story, which is which which, which tells you about the priorities of the Bnei Gadu Bnei Ruben. How long did, did they were they separated from their families? Uh, but when they went into the land of Israel, it was a total of fourteen years. Fourteen years. It was seven years of conquest, seven years of kibush conquest of the land, and seven years of chalukah, of, of distribution of the land. So they were away from their families for such a long period of time. And yet they were willing to do all that. They were willing to leave their families, and they were willing to leave their children, and they were willing to leave you know, the whole family structure and be away for years. It wasn't like today, where you can just like hop on a plane, come back every few months. You know, they were away for years. Why are they working so hard? They're working so hard so they can have some money left in the bank. But what about all those years that they lost out? They didn't see their kids grow up. They didn't see, they didn't celebrate at the, at, at the, happy, at the happy moments at the graduations and all the, all, the life, all the life cycle moments because they, they were committed to something. But what were they committed to? They were committed to making money. And, and, and Moshe called them out on it. Moshe apparently, he didn't, uh, wasn't completely successful because they still, they still persevered with their goal of wanting to stay away from the families just so they can have better livelihood at the end. And that didn't work out so well for them as the book of Yoshua teaches us. But putting that aside, I think this, this should once again underscore for us what's essential in our lives and what's non-essential. You know, when we think about what are we going to go out for today? What are we going to go out for the house? You know, COVID is raging. Unfortunately, you know, our city is, um, is overwhelmed with uh, many, many cases of COVID. And we have to keep in mind to, to pray and daven for the citizens of our city. Hashem should have mercy on on our city, on our state, on our country, and the world. Shem Shem, great mercy. But I'm only thinking about what we're going to go out for. What's most essential? Groceries. It makes sense, groceries, because you, have to, you can't live without, without groceries. But beyond that, what are, what, are, what are you going to go out for? So everybody has to go ahead and do their own cheshben and afesh. They have to go ahead and do their own introspection and reflection about what's most essential to you. Some people say, I'm not going to go out for that because I'm not comfortable with the disease. I'm not going to go there. But are you comfortable to do something else despite the virus raging on the streets? What, what do we, how do we define essential activities in our lives? It all comes back to our priorities. So let us not forget the lesson of Negad and Negruve. Let us always remember what it means to have our priorities straight. Wish you all peaceful shops.